what three baits should you be using in the month of May? That's what we're gonna talk about right now. So finally, it's May and everyone should be able to find open water, clean water. Hopefully you're fin finally able to get out there and go fishing. A lot of places throughout the country are having all three phases of fishing. The transition of bass fishing is happening. Either you're in the pre-spawn or you're in the spawn or you're in the post-spawn. But right now what we're going to concentrate on is the, the size of the baits and what they're going to be eating. This is a month of May when shad is the main forage bait that they are going to eat. They're, the shad are going to be spawning. They're going to be a certain size. So we want to make our baits look that same size. Now, while you can use a lot of different baits throughout the month, hopefully these three will help you or allow you to target the fish that you can catch a little bit easier. In the month of May, we're going to start seeing grass starting to grow finally. That's a great area to start to target fish. We're also going to see fish that are going to start being in the shallow water because the shad are going to be in there. One thing you need to remember, shad like to spawn or spawn at night. So your early morning fishing and your evening fishing are going to be really a great time to fish that shallow water, that, that, those areas that have cover. So that time of of early morning and early afternoon is perfect time to catch lots of fish. And you'll catch big ones too because either you're in that one of those three phases, one of those three transition phases. I would suggest that if you're one of the baits we're gonna talk about is a crankbait. I would suggest that if you're using a crankbait that you use a little bit bigger hooks. Those smaller hooks though make the bait a little bit lighter, right now, you want to use something that's going to make sure you grab those that fish. So changing out your treble hooks to a little bit bigger is a real positive. And if you really want to take it to the next step, then add the feather treble and that'll even add a little bit more action to those baits. One thing you need to remember, and a lot of pros will tell you, the dirtier the water, the darker the bait. The cleaner the water, the more natural the bait. Me personally, I fish a lot of dark, deep, diarrhea looking water. Just what it is down here in Florida. So I use a lot of blacks. This is what you can use to get yourself that little edge. Now I don't think color matters that much, but you want to know what you got to fish what you're confident in. So if you're up north or you're in the middle of the, the country, I would start to I would start fishing ledges and rock piles and areas that those bass can just sit and just ambush a fish. This is a good time that after they spawn, half the fish are gonna stay shallow, the other half are gonna start getting deeper. Your smallies, your, your largemouth, your stripers, all of them. Some are gonna go uh, stay shallow, the others are gonna go off, sure. So finding ledges and stumps and things like that in the water, rock piles, those are great areas to target fish. May is a time when structure starts to matter underneath a dock underneath lily pads, underneath that rock pile or by that rock pile or that stump. Bass are going to be there. That's why we want to target those areas and target fish with a moving bait so that they will have a reaction strike and eat your bait. So the first bait I think you should be using is a crankbait. Now again, I'm not going to really throw any of these ones down your throat. That's a good one. This is the Thunderhawk that bounces off things real well. It also has really good hooks because I just hooked myself. But a small crankbait is perfect. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use the bigger ones and catch fish, but a crankbait that you trust can bounce off things, bounce off of that, that stump or that rock ledge or whatever it is, is very important. Now, you'll see I, those are just colors I grabbed out of my box. I think this time of the year, you want to use something silver-ish, something shaddish color. That's going to attract more fish. The other thing is you got to figure out if you want a silent one or one that has rattles. You need to really have both tied on before you go fishing and then fish the one that you get the bite on. If you're noticing that they're not eating one that has rattles, don't use it. You need to be able to 
move and transition yourself, just like the fish are transitioning, you need to be able to transition from one uh, lure to the other and quickly. You don't want to have to retie and do all that stuff. Bring two rods, have two different crankbaits on there. It's going to make your life better and you can't catch a fish if your bait isn't in the water. Remember that. My second bait is my favorite bait and this is one of two boxes that are filled with chatterbaits. That one has two. Chatterbaits, yes, that one has two. Two jackhammers. That one's actually a cross eyes. But get yourself a good chatterbait. Um, I think right now why I would why I'm using a chatterbait is I want that vibration and I want them to feel what's happening. I want the sound that the that the chatterbait's making and I want the vibration. Bass are going to be looking for those bluegill and shad spawn. So I want to use something that I can throw, cast underneath the dock and just bring it bring it right over top of them. Let them feel that vibration. And this is also a month where, because the water is starting to slowly get a little bit warmer, that bass will start going actively attacking a bait. They'll go from a little bit distance and chase it down. Where in, when the water's cold and they're very lethargic, they don't want to move. Now in the middle of the country and down south, they will actively attack a, a bait if they hear it or feel it on their lateral line. So a great bait with a great trailer is chatterbait or vibrating jig and my last bait is a topwater buzz bait and this one's been beaten up a little bit i'm going to throw that one over there a buzz bait's perfect because like i said early in the morning and in the evening that shad spawns happening you can make that cast and that will if it's a good one will run over top of grass and lily pads and everything it'll kind of bounce off of it without getting snagged but you can cast that up into the grass or whatever it is and that clacking noise that a buzz bait makes attracts bites this is a time where you're getting the the, the vibration off that that blade but also you're getting the clacking sound and a little bit of flash from that just like right now a spinner bait is a great bait to use if you're having a shad spawn a spinner bait and buzz bait are great baits to use and ones that you'll get tons of bites on and like last month, I gave you a fourth bait, and it's going to be the same bait. Get yourself a walking frog. This one is a scum frog trophy series, I think, or the Bobby's Perfect Frog. This is crucial right now. We all are having some sort of spawn or tadpoles in our ponds. If there's tadpoles, there's got to be mommy and daddies. Cast that bait into the grass into a spot that you, you're not even hitting water. And let that bait jump off of the bank and into the water, just like what a frog would do. Do it early in the morning, late in the evening, and hold on to that rod. This is the time to be throwing frogs. If you have grass mats, if you have lily pads, all those things are gonna be holding fish underneath or in it. And they're looking for frogs because there's a lot of tadpoles going on. If they can get a bigger bait to eat or a bigger profile, they're going to eat it. The small fish and the big fish. This is the time to be throwing a frog, spitting frog, popping frog, whatever you want to do. If you've got an area that you see tadpoles or you know the frog, you have frogs, get a frog in your hand. It's crucial right now. This is when I physically start to frog fish all the time. Every time I go to a, a place, there's a frog on a, a rod right now. The month of May is great. Probably my second favorite month of the year. April being my favorite because it's Thomas's birthday. May, maybe you know somebody else's birthday. But this is a great time to go fishing. So get out there, do your best and tell me what three lures you're gonna use this month. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I hope I don't have an echo. I'll talk to y'all soon. Cheers.